if we look at the years uh, since 2014, we see that Russia has actively prepared for such a confrontation with the West. And uh, in, in the economy, it built up uh, what economists call fortress Russia. It means like, so to, to, according to the strategy, Russia built massive reserves. Uh, and for now, at, uh, it's an all time high. So the Central Bank of Russia reserves have uh, increased more than 70% since late 2015. And now they have about 630 uh, billions of dollars in reserves. And um, this money were not spent during the pandemic, so to support the economy and um, Russian business. So it was a rainy day. It wasn't a rainy day for the government. And uh, the economists suggest that, you know, this is exactly the, uh, you know, the, uh, the possibility to sustain heavy sanctions uh, for Russia. So in case it will be introduced and we see uh, it's very likely that uh, very hard economic sanctions will be introduced. Also, since 2015, uh, Russia has ramped up its foreign currency reserves and sought to start de-dollarization its economy. So it, it sought a way how to, do, uh, how to be less dependent on, on US um, economic mechanism. And uh, it also moved away uh, its reserves uh, holding in US and European jurisdictions. So it, it tries to, uh, to protect uh, possible uh, possible targets uh, from from US and uh, European uh, institutions. It also, so the government debt is uh, equivalent about 30% of GDP, and uh, this is one of the lowest in the world. And it's also what Vladimir Putin uh, has done uh, during 20 years. So he worked hardly on uh, reducing the government debt and uh, achieved uh, significant results in that. And uh, the Kremlin also wanted um, to build kind of fortress Russia in the digital domain. Uh, and also since 2013, uh, so it proclaimed independence from uh, foreign technologies and uh, also introduced uh, IT import substitutions. Um, but I have to say uh, it has not achieved much results in this domain. <coughs> I'm sorry. And uh, what we found out in our studies, and also if you look deeper into Russia's economy, into Russia's technologies, you see that Russia remains hugely dependent on Western and especially on US technologies. And um, also listening to Mr. Putin today in the morning, I also understood that um, what also Stefan already said, that uh, he lost the reality when he said that um, so Russia can sustain any sanctions. So uh, we are well prepared, we are good. Um, uh, this, the US sanctions won't work that hard for Russia. And again, if you look at the technologies and if you look how they work for Russian people and for the Russian economy, you see that uh, technological sanctions will be a massive blow for Russia. So the countries practically rely in every single sector uh, of the digital domain, if it comes to hardware, if it comes to software, if it comes to uh, uh, open source um, software, so it's all about relying on Western technologies and especially on US technologies. And this concern not only products from US companies directly, like such big companies as uh, Cisco, Intel, or Google, and uh, devices, but also devices manufactured with uh, US technologies. For example, Russia has its own processor Baikal and it's very proud about it. Uh, but if you look at the details, you see that, um, this processor is based on ARM architecture, which is a British semiconductor company. And it also it microchips produced in Taiwan. Uh, so, and Taiwan in his turn is also dependent on US technologies. And if you look at every single corner operating system, it's about US technologies. It's about cloud computing, it's US technologies. And we're talking about like very basis for uh, for Russian people, but also for Russian economy. And uh, yeah, and also if, if we look in the, the future, which Vladimir Putin uh, doesn't like uh, to do, uh, we see that such technology as, as 5G, so Russia has no own solutions to do it. So it's, it cooperates with Nokia, with Ericsson, partly with Huawei, <clears throat> but practically it can't do its own 5G network. 
So actually the West and especially the US has a huge leverage over Russia and uh, a technological blockade uh, can hit both the consumer market and the companies that produce equipment for commercial and government needs. And uh, so specialists in technologies and economy in Russia says that <clears throat> the worst option uh, will be the introduction of two-stage sanctions. Uh, it means the supply of both products from US companies, such as Intel, NVIDIA, Cisco, and so on, but also equipment manufactured to use in American technologies. So if they will be banned, so it will be a huge blow for Russia. So it practically will, would mean a full stop for Russian economy. And uh, concrete, it could mean that, as far as I know, now it's under discussion the um, Biden administration, but also US Department of Commerce is discussing this possibility, is a very powerful tool of the United States, so-called foreign direct product rule. This rule um, has a very unique degree of uh, extraterritorial application. So it means, um, even if a product, uh, let's say hardware or software, is made outside of the United States by, by a foreign company, the US can still reach if it produced from US origin technology. Uh, such an instrument has been already uh, applied um, towards um, Chinese company Huawei, and we saw a lot of troubles for the company to to produce their products, also smartphones, and also Russia experienced. Uh, uh, shortages of the, of the supply of uh, Huawei in, in Russia. So, and uh, and as far as I know, so the last discussion was kind of, it would be kind of nuclear option or it would be like a very, very uh, worst case scenario, but how we see it today in the morning, so we are already in this uh, worst case scenario. And I think we can expect uh, introduction, introducing of such uh, sanctions in case of Russia. <music>